giving clean needles to drug addicts. Right now, you can be prosecuted if you do that, but as our Chris Davis shows us, a group traveled to Jefferson City in hopes of changing minds and hearts. Aaron Laxton has been here before, three times to be exact. We think that this year we have the best chance that we've ever had. He's in Jefferson City in hopes of passing House Bill 168. This grants health care workers such as myself, social workers, it offers us some protections. That's really what this bill, when we boil it down to the brass tacks, that's what it's all about. We traveled to Chicago last summer to show you how needle exchanges work. Yes, every time I use a fresh cotton. Michael Zelasco credits the University of Illinois at Chicago's exchange program with saving his life. I don't have AIDS, I don't have hepatitis, I've never had a, a, any diseases. Places like this, I mean, you, you know, that's, that's what they're for. The results in Chicago are staggering. New diagnoses of HIV are down nearly 27% over the last decade. In St. Louis, it's only down 8%, which is about the national average. Aaron would like to see those numbers in Missouri. The person that accesses our syringe access is five times more likely to voluntarily enter into a treatment program. So this year, he's brought a secret weapon to Jeff City. I want you to meet Grayson. His seven-week-old son, Grayson. Uh, and he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for syringe exchange. Grayson's biological mother was hooked on heroin during the pregnancy, but because of access to clean syringes, they believe Grayson is healthier than he would have been otherwise. Aaron may have been here before, but thanks to his little lobbyist, the third time may be the charm. Each year we talk about death, and, and of course that's a huge piece of the opioid crisis, but you know we need to look for glimmers of hope, and Grayson's our glimmer of hope. Now this really might be the year for clean syringe access in Missouri. At tonight's hearing in Jefferson City, no one testified against the plan. Aaron says that could be a positive indication of how this will go, Ann. Now people who don't like this idea at all are probably thinking this just encourages them to use more. Like right? saying, hey, it's okay, here's some more free needles. Well, two points to that. For one, there's not a single health organization out there that says this is a bad idea, that this is really just a clean route to be able to get these individuals that are battling addiction at least a clean way to do it, and then you can start getting them some of the uh, what they need to be able to get uh, into recovery. And you mentioned they're more likely to get into a recovery. Is that because they think if you want a clean needle, you care more about your, you kind of care about your body enough to do that, Maybe you'll care enough to get it clean. Absolutely, and, and it really comes down to a trust thing too. You start to trust these people that work these clean at needle exchanges, and then they can start talking you into ways to be able to get help. Those relationships. All right, Chris, thank you.